episode of Jane Lowe's Garage. Today we're obviously talking about motorcycles, American-made motorcycles. You know, there are three American motorcycle manufacturers now. You've got Harley, of course, Indian has come on with a vengeance, and Motus out of uh, Alabama. Now, if you've never heard of them, well, that's probably because you never heard of them. They're a small company, but they make their own motor. See, that's, to me, that's the key, because a lot of people come here with bikes, and it uses an S&S &S engine and other parts, and they might put their name on it, but it's an S&S. &S. I mean, S&S &S makes a fine engine, but you didn't invent it. You didn't develop it. That's what I like about this company. This is all American-made stuff, and it's a, an engine unique to this motorcycle. And it's an engine we really haven't seen before. People like to call it half a Chevy V8, but it's not really because the whole engine is built from, from the ground up, basically. It's a bespoke motor. It isn't, you know, half a Chevy block cut in half or any of that nonsense. Uh, and they have a full range of bikes that are sold in all uh, 50 states. You know, a lot of people come here with vehicles that they're going to sell. And then they say, we're waiting for certification or we're waiting for our dealers or whatever. And it never quite comes to fruition. But these guys have done it. Let's bring in Brian and Lee. Come in, guys. How you doing? Hey, Jay. Okay. Thanks for having us. Now, let's tell us which is which. I'm Brian. You're Brian, and you're the design guy. Design guy, yeah. And vice president. Mm -hmm. Lee. Lee. And I'm the president. The president of the company. Okay. You guys started in what, 2008, something yeah, like that? Yeah, 2008. Okay. okay. So what was the idea? What were you thinking? Well, we wanted to build a, a bike that would sort of put America back on the map for mm -hmm. performance machines. And uh, really nobody in the U.S. is making a bike in this general category. But it's, uh, it's an awesome style of riding. It's, it's what we like to and ride. And this category would be hot rod sport riding. Because America makes plenty of cruiser bikes. Harley and Indian make great cruiser bikes, yeah. certainly. But this would be, what category is it? Tell me. We call them comfortable American sport bikes. Comfortable American sport bikes, OK. I love this engine. You know, one of my favorite engines back in the mid 80s was that Laverta V6. I just thought it was the sexiest motor. And this kind of reminds me of that. And it's a pushrod engine, correct? That's right. 1,650 cc's? Correct. Okay. 90 degree V4, two valves per cylinder, pushrod. Now, you guys use Pratt and Miller. I love these guys. Now, if you don't know Pratt and Miller, they raced Corvettes at Le Mans. And they won Le Mans a bunch of times with their Corvettes. And uh, they're the ones building these motors for you? Uh, we build these in Alabama. Oh, you do build yeah. them in Alabama. Okay, so you use yeah. Pratt & Miller for what? Pratt & Miller is like our engineering arm. Oh, okay, so gotcha, they help gotcha. us a lot with the chassis, uh, the finite element analysis, oh, okay. the strength of the chromoly tube frame chassis. They helped us engineer our gearbox, our sequential six-speed gearbox. Right. Um, they had a lot of experience with uh, the American V8 engine architecture, so it right. was kind of a natural um, synergy there. Uh, that's, that's how we got to um, get in business with them. They loved the, the engine that we came up with. So. Right. So what we have is basically uh, cam and block push rod V4, correct? That's right. And I know that may sound old fashioned, but when you look at the Corvette, the reason the Corvette handles and drives so well, because all the reciprocating mass is down low. Your camshaft is down here, so you can have a low engine with a, a low hood. Uh, you know, the hood could be lower than almost any other sports car in the market, I think. And the same thing with this, isn't it? If, you're, if you had overhead cams, you'd be sort of out to here, yeah. and everything would be whirring up here and instead of down below. Exactly. And I, I like these kind of motors because they're pretty bulletproof and take all kinds of torque, don't they? What's it, what is the torque on this? 126 motor? foot pounds <laughs> at five good. grand. Okay, that's but you've got from, you know, about three grand all the way up to 8,600, you've got over 100 foot-pounds of torque. So anywhere, any gear, you always have immediate torque at your wrist, and it feels awesome. Tell me about the process, because to me, I, it, it, it's almost incredible to me that, because it, it's just easier to take somebody else's engine and, and, build your, and build the bike and put your name on it. And, but but to, to go all the way back to the beginning like this, I don't think people have any idea how hard it is to build your own engine from scratch. It's just so easy just to borrow a Buell or an s, &S or something else and put your name on it. Uh, that's why I think you guys are, are, are pretty amazing. How frustrating is it, how heartbreaking is it to just, there's the whole development process, castings fail, engines blow up until you get it to where you want. I mean, did you ever get discouraged? 
Well, you know, the oldest you know, adage is, if it was easy, everybody would be doing it. Right, yeah. Um, so it, it, it's a process. You know, you step through things calmly and casually, and you just try to make really good decisions and sort of stand on the shoulders of others that have done it before us. Um, but yeah, it's a very complex project. It's a big project, and uh, we're pretty happy with it. Was it hard to convince investors and whatnot that we're going to build a pushrod V4 motorcycle? Yes, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it in is. In 2008, yeah. yeah, it was very Because hard. it's really a labor of love. First, the motorcycle market is not like the iPhone market where everybody has to have one. Right, right. And, and you're in a unique class here because it's an American sport hot rod bike. I, I, you see, the fun thing is, I can't think of any uh, European bike that really rivals this. I mean, you have this six cylinder BMW, the inline, that's one. but. It's not like this. It just makes a whole different kind of power. And the power starts low and, and stays throughout the rev range, doesn't it? That's yeah, the great that's thing right. about uh, V8s or V4s. And it really is almost half a V8, isn't it? Well, when we started in 2008, mm -hmm. clean sheet of paper, you know, just, just picture two guys. What are we going to do? What are we going to build? Um, the engine became the answer to us as something that was going to be undeniably American mm -hmm. that wasn't an air-cooled V-twin. So that's kind of the inspiration behind the architecture because of the modern American sports car engine. Uh, that's what we love. Uh, so we wanted to kind of bake all that into a little package and have sport bike type, type handling and performance much like the European bikes have, have always been. So that, we kind of just blended that mm -hmm. together. Which came first? The idea for the engine or the motorcycle? Engine. I mean, did you think we want to build a motorcycle or do you think I'd like to build this engine. Hey, let's put it in a motorcycle. Well, that's a good question. Yeah, we wanted to build a bike. We're, right. we, yeah, we're motorcycle enthusiasts. We're nuts. We wanted to build a bike. So a lot of my early sketches were like, what's it going to look like? Right. You know, so um, I, I was drawing a V-twin. I started with an air-cooled right. V-twin. And great, it's going to be another air, American air-cooled V-twin sport bike. Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't good enough. It was like, you know, the whole designer's block thing. Like, we had to come up with something that was going to be compelling and when we we started going in the v4 direction that's when we knew it it was like this there was no other choice for us we could Did you not ever think v6 and then now let's loop up two more cylinders well we could add more cylinders you yeah, know sure no i'm just curious if <laughs> yeah. you, or was it always a v4 we looked at a bunch of different configurations right. and we sort of backed into it with the performance we want and the packaging we want and uh, we settled on the v4 i think it's probably the only v4 ever built in the in the u.s right. for a production you know kind of reason and i think it's the only push rod v4 in the world yeah because i don't want people to think it's some variation of a boss hoss which yeah. is a big v8 stuck in a frame that's this is yeah, a no. light engine that really weighs probably no more than the bmw6 or any of the you uh, could pick that engine up and walk out of here it's, yeah. a, it's 140 pounds i'll think about doing that <laughs> oh, it's 140 pounds yeah wow all, all, all aluminum. cast aluminum okay. a356 uh, solid. It's a stressed uh, member of the chassis, so right. you see the perimeter uh, chromoly frame completes the, the, the structure. Now, I recognize some automotive parts on here. Tell me about these coils. Well, we tried to use as many sort of durable and well understood parts as we could. So these are coils off a of, uh, modern Chevrolet Corvette, and we use some sensors and other types of things that make a lot of sense because they just, they never fail. Okay. You know, these guys have got it figured out, so we, we borrowed as much as we could. Solid lifter or hydraulic though? Hydraulic. Okay. No adjustments. So no adjustment yeah. necessary. Yeah. Right. Okay. Somebody, uh, a smart ass, I think, put in a manual somewhere, inspect every 100,000 miles. Oh, right. yeah. <laughs> and chain drive, not uh, shaft or belt. That's right. I, I like a chain. I'm just old school. Yeah. It just looks like a motorcycle with a chain. Yeah. I don't know why that is. Uh, yeah, no, I think it's just fascinating. And I just can't imagine, you know, we work on a lot of engines here, and you tear them down, you put them together. Right now, we're trying to put together a couple of rough superior engines, and we can't get the oiling right. We're just working on that. So I can't imagine starting from scratch and pouring your own castings and doing the whole bit. It's pretty amazing. The whole thing is 22 castings there that we had to design, engineer, and tool up and get made in America. And it can be done. It totally can be done. And whose transmission do you use? So we designed the whole thing really? from a clean sheet. Okay. And, and we, we really... Uh, um, weighed a lot on Pratt & Miller because they have so much experience in sequential racing gearboxes. Right. So our uh, transmission design is incredibly robust, can handle 
hundreds of foot pounds of torque because that's their experience. You know, they make stuff that doesn't break in a 24 hour race. Yeah. So um, it has kind of that imbued in the, in the soul of the bike is this racing gearbox. All right, let's move over to the bike itself. <coughs> this is the uh, MST-R, so this is, would be the sport model, is that fair to say? That's correct. Okay. 180 horsepower? 180. Okay, geez, that's pretty good. And what does the whole bike weigh? Uh, fully wet with 40 pounds of fuel and 30 pounds of luggage. Mm -hmm. It's about 580, 590. Okay, okay. Uh, Brembo brakes. Yeah, I love the lights down here, actually. Are yeah. these driving lights or they come out with the headlights? They are. Those are clear waters, which are made in Sacramento. Okay. Uh, it's a beautiful piece. Uh, really is an incredible for safety, and uh, we're, we're pretty happy to, yeah. to put those on. Olin suspension, front and rear mm -hmm. on this bike. Uh, top of the line, uh, super bike level suspension on this bike. Right. Uh, highly tunable, triple adjustable, uh, solid chassis, chromoly steel, as I said, uh, very rigid. When you ride it, you won't feel any wallowing in the, uh, in the suspension and frame. And you guys built these in Alabama, right? That's right. Alabama, Birmingham, yep. Mm -hmm. And we're located in the original location of the Barber Museum. Oh, sure. A lot of ghosts left in that building. Yeah, so, yeah. Good yeah. spirits there, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and you have, what, 22 dealers around the country now? 22 okay. really, really good shops. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, you should look this up. Read the Cycle World Road Test. Read motorcycles. Read what they have to say. Because it's a real bike. I love to see people building something in America. It's so hard with all these uh, automobile manufacturers and some motorcycle manufacturers going out of business. It's nice to see guys coming up with something. And this is a uniquely American appealing engine, you know? I mean, it's uh, water-cooled, it's not air-cooled, uh, and it looks good, it looks good. It looks like a real motor. Um, 1,650 uh, cubic, <laughs> that's a pretty big motor. Yes. Six-speed transmission? 1,650 cc's, yeah. um, but we kind of backed into that number because we- cubic inches, I mean cc, sorry. Yeah, 60, yeah, yeah, it's 100 cubic inch. 100 cubic inch, Yeah, right. so okay. uh, there, there, there's Harleys that are bigger than this engine. Right. But it uh, for us we backed into it because we wanted you know from the beginning we wanted an American sport bike that could handle the twisties and have torque out of the the the, the turns so that two valve push rod nature and the displacement you know with three and a quarter bore um, that's how we arrived at 1650 right. to give it the torque that we wanted at the bottom end coming off of 2500 rpm you've, You've got 80 foot pounds of torque. And what's the most test miles you've got on any by any engine so far? Do you know? Uh, probably the, the most test miles are probably dyno. Right. You know, doing accelerated durability sure. in a dyno, which is a pretty pretty hellish thing to do. Um, but we got a lot of bikes with a lot of miles on them. It's actually a painful thing to watch to see our <laughs> engine go through a durability yeah. uh, sawtooth cycle on a dyno. It just yeah. looks like it's it's in pain, kind of <laughs> like a you know like you you want to go in and and uh, save it, but it, it's, uh, it's impressive to watch this thing and what it can handle. And it's, you know, the bottom end, triple plane bearing bottom end, right. uh, four bolt mains, it's incredibly uh, durable. Uh, and that's why we're, we're pushing, you know, a crate engine program because we want to see it in all kinds of things. What is the warranty on the motor? Uh, two year on the motor itself. Well, I mean, two, what is it on the yeah. Well, the oh. motorcycle has two years unlimited miles. Oh, okay. And we can even extend that up to six years. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. So it's meant to be driven. Uh, it's meant to be ridden. It's, uh, we, we, our customers ride these bikes all over the country. They put some serious miles on them. Yeah. And you've sold quite a few. And again, it's legal in all 50 states. Yeah. Correct. I, I, I get a little tired of people coming. We're just waiting for a certification. Well, it's, yeah. it, for whatever reason, they don't have this. It doesn't have that. The government said you can't do this. Yeah. I mean, if you've ever tried to build something, the regulations Oh my God, it's pretty crazy. And these go for about what, 30 grand? Yeah, the MST right. starts uh, about 30 grand, okay. and the MSTR is in the mid 30s. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but that's really what you pay for a tricked out gold wing or almost, or, or a big Harley dresser or something of that nature. Right, sure. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quality piece. Again, I can't stress the fact that they make their own motor. That's the real sign of dedication to me because it, it's, if you use somebody else's motor, the rest is not easy, but it's easier to build your own motor. And then you have to get the motor certified, correct? That's, That's right. right. You've got to give government testing. It's got to pass. EPA and CARB. EPA. Yep. As you can see, it's a full, full catalyzed exhaust system. That's right. And uh, we had to go through all the testing. And those tests are expensive, like 50 grand or something a test, some crazy thing like that. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I mean, so 
the fact that you're able to get this done shows real dedication. Uh, you're not going to get rich for a while building these. <laughs> so that shows that it's a labor of love. We're having fun. Yeah, you're having fun, <laughs> and you're making a quality American product. That's what really impresses me uh, about it. I mean, there's, there's, there's real heart and soul into the bike. Um, and something else you do that I think is unusual is you sell the engine separately if people want it. They can put it in any application they want, huh? That's right. Yeah, we spend a lot of time trying to make it as configurable and easy to adapt into other applications. Mm -hmm. And we've done boats, we've done small cars, um, we brought a supercharged version of our bike. Oh, we there you go. A, and what do we have here? Oh, okay. Here's a, a Polaris Razor that we okay. put the motor in. All right. Um, this thing is a riot. We took 100 horsepower motor out of it and put 180 in it. It's about the same size. Yeah. We didn't cut the chassis or anything. And yeah. really, Pratt and Miller did the integration. Uh, that thing right there will, uh, it's an eye opener. Yeah. It'll, it'll do a wheel stand. Yeah. It, it's, it's pretty awesome. It's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and this one is a custom bike, obviously. It's got a supercharger on it. Yeah, we built this um, as a development bike to uh, some of our customers want some uh, power adders uh, mm -hmm. to their crate engine. So we're, we're developing the ECU mapping with okay. a uh, bolt-on pro charger, basically. And what are you getting for horsepower with this? Uh, about 230. Two, 230, yeah. okay. A little crazy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, the, okay. This is full touring this bike. This is the R with yeah. all the touring equipment Full touring package, your hard bags, okay. easily removable. And uh, the, the two MSTs here. I noticed some have red, oh, only the R has the red valve cover. Is that That's, the right. Okay. That's right. That's yeah. right, yeah. All right, okay. Something else I noticed you don't have is the whole electronic uh, touring, wet weather, rain. I, I'm someone, when I buy a bike, I put it on setting on sport, and it stays there for the next 25, 30 years, something like that. I don't really jump around a lot. Why did you not feel the need to have to integrate all that? We just wanted to make a real rider's bike. You know, right. it's easy to get into lots of gimmicks and that kind of thing, and we're, we're kind of the same way. We just really wanted to build something that it was just about the feeling we used to get, you know, on bikes where they just, it was just the throttle and the engine and the road and right. um, get that visceral feeling back without cool, too much cool. nanny. Right. There's only one mode. That's yeah. it. That's all you have to remember. Yeah, so it would be a sport mode, yeah. essentially. That's right. Okay. That's right. Very cool. And, and no anti lock brake. No, it's got a, an incredible Brembo uh, brake package on it, and it's not overbraked. I think a lot of times, with uh, you know, in the custom bike world, they throw the most expensive brakes they can find on it, and it tends to be overbraked for the right. street. Right. And we work directly with Brembo to make sure that the bike and the package and the weight of the bike was not an overbraked package. So they perform incredibly well. Okay. The philosophy, Jay, was you know a lot of. Uh, bikes you buy these days, they sort of strip them down and you're expected to go out and maybe replace the seat or replace the handlebars and right. those kind of things. And we just said, let's just build a great bike, put really nice components on it. You know, it's a Kropovich mufflers and Sargent saddle. It's, it's all there. Yeah. So you can just go out and ride. And where does the name Modus come from? Modus is a Latin word right. that means motion or movement. Right. It can mean a movement of people, but primarily for us it's Moto US. See, I didn't know if people in Alabama spoke Latin. <laughs> I had no idea. I, it's well, you know. my whole opinion of, of, <laughs> of uh, people in robes speaking Latin walking around Birmingham. That's unbelievable. I had no idea. No, it's a toga party every day. Yeah, yeah but, but uh, there's all kinds of tech down there because of Huntsville and the Space Center. You know, Absolutely. a lot of people joke about Alabama, you know. Right. But it's, it's really a high-tech center, especially in the automotive world. You have Porsche. Their test track is based there as well, right at Barber. So that's, that's, right. that's pretty cool. Very nice. Very nice. Well, let's... Uh, Let's take us out on the road, I'm anxious to uh, go for a ride. Okay, initial impression. We've only got about a mile and a half or two miles. Extremely comfortable riding position. I love these bars. It reminds me of the Vincent Black Shadow. You kind of sit up and bake, they call it. But it's a real comfortable riding position. There's not a lot of weight on your arm. And all this is certainly not a lightweight bike. It's not a real heavy bike either. It's about, what did he say, 550 pounds, something like that. But it carries its weight down low, so it's quite maneuverable. The nice thing is, it's a hot day today, and I'm not getting much heat off this motor which is very nice. You know, a lot of times you ride a bike and boy, you just 
burn yourself with that heat coming off. It grows. Whereas this, it runs nice and cool. It's a very torquey motor. I mean, every gear you just get instant pull the minute you open that throttle. I like the fact that you got a, a lot of bulletproof components here. You know, I mean, two valve, push rod, couldn't be simpler, but simple means reliable and easy to fix. I love the torque band. No matter what gear you're in, you've got all kinds of power. There's no real need to downshift with this thing. I mean, American motorcycles have always been about torque. You know, Harley, Indian. They always had that strong pulling power, but they were always around 65 to maybe 90 horsepower. Imagine that same feel of torque, but with 180 horsepower. That's what you got here. I love the fact that they'll sell you the engine separately. You can put it in a go-kart or whatever the heck you want. I, I think that's kind of cool. A little V4 great motor. Well, I must say, the riding position, extremely comfortable. You know, this is a classic case of not reinventing the wheel. You're just taking the wheel and making it rounder and perfecting it a little bit. You know, what you have here is all proven technology. You know, a lot of automotive parts, uh, like, the, like the coil from the Corvette and a few other things. And this, uh, what appears to be bulletproof V8. It's a, it's 90 degrees out here today. I don't even feel any heat coming off of this thing. It runs nice and cool. Riding position is real nice. It's a really comfortable motorcycle to ride. And the torque is there. You know, we Americans just like our torque. You know, with, with your Harleys and your Indians, you've got uh, a lot of 80, 90 foot-pounds of torque with maybe 75 to 90 horsepower. But it feels like a lot more power because, you know, torque uh, wins races. You know, horsepower sells cars. Uh, but um, here you've got the same torque as those big V-twins, but with 180 horsepower. Which, uh, it's pr I mean, I've barely been out of second gear or third gear. We'll take it up in the freeway and put it in sixth gear. But it, it just pulls so nicely. And to have a push rod motor like this rev to 7,500 kind of makes me laugh a little bit. You know, a Corvette is 640 horsepower, weighs about 3,000 pounds. That's a V8. You cut the V8 in half. And you got 180 horsepower with 500 pounds, you're going to beat the Corvette. You got a better power to weight ratio. Um, but I think the most important, impressive part about this thing is the fact that it's a finished production motorcycle. As I said before, I've just had so many people come to the garage with their dream, and I take it for a ride, and something fails. Well, you know, we're going to fix that when we reach production or. Oh, these are finished bikes. They're coming out of the factory now by the rate of five or six a week, something like that. Uh, so you're not going to see yourself coming and going. But I think this has the ability to be a real cult motorcycle. Especially if, when you start seeing guys putting 100,000 miles on these motors, you know. Because as I said, this is a, this, this, there's nothing new here. It's just done right and done properly. You know, when Indian came out with their with their Scout in 1931. It was a flathead, but it beat all the overhead valve engines because, oh, they had a, a gear-driven primary and uh, a few other things, and they built it to last. It didn't quite rev the way some of the overhead valve ones did, but it was reliable, and it made good, solid torque and good, solid horsepower. And when the other motorcycles broke, that's when the engine won a lot of races. So. You know, sometimes the last days of old technology are, are better than the first days of new technology. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily the case here because there's a lot of technology in this motor. But a lot of people might poo-poo it because it's a two-valve, you know, uh, uh, cam and block motor. 
But all that means is he's got lots of torque, lots of horsepower, lots of reliability. I mean, look at this. You know, most bikes on a day like that, you shut it off and you hear bing, bing, bing as they cool because the, the engine gets so hot. Whereas this thing, it's not, it's not stressed at all. I mean, it's just, it's just a real comfortable bike. I think you could do five, six hundred miles a day and easy because it's really comfortable. Let's take it up on the freeway. When I get into six gear, I can't even, I'm not good enough to, uh, <laughs> to, to, to push it really hard on these twisties. Plus I'm old and, and plus there are a lot of cops. Let's take it up on the freeway and see what it does up there. Come on, we'll do that. At 65 miles an hour, this engine's barely turning over. You don't want to hit the short school bus. Very nice, gentlemen. You know, the most impressive thing is, I don't mean the sarcastic, nothing broke. You know, anybody can make a vehicle go fast. To make it go fast and be dependable, and not overheat and have nothing bust on you when you're riding. The number of times people brought prototype vehicles here and just everything from things that couldn't matter less to stuff that's really dangerous, something always goes wrong. And these are full production motorcycles being built in Alabama by a legitimate company. And I think it's really good in an age when we keep hearing about how manufacturing is leaving America and we don't make anything anymore. Here are a couple of guys building something here in the States something that's a real competitor. I mean, it's uh, you're one of the top three American motorcycle men. You got Harley, Indian, and Modus. There you go, guys. Nice work, gentlemen. Thanks, Jay. Thank yeah, you, very impressive. Cool. You. Thank you. Very comfortable bike. Mm-hmm. <laughs>